Hey guys, Enter the Stars, and wanted to come on here today. Let's uh, pull this up and talk about the Grammys. A lot to cover on this, you guys. We also have the 88th Oscars coming up. Uh, let's wait for some of you guys to get in here. This will be pretty quick. I don't plan on being here for much longer than half an hour. But I wanted to share with you my findings on the Grammys and the Oscars. Let's take a look at what we have going on here. Let's see who popped in here this morning into the chat to uh, to listen to this broadcast. I'm going to wait maybe a few minutes before we get started. You guys, everything that's presented to us in the media is all about symbolism. Okay, It's all symbolism. Um, it's all a form of sorcery that is meant to deceive us, that is meant to indoctrinate us, it is meant to basically cause, shape our behaviors and cause us to um, go move in a certain direction. The hive mentality, okay? And they do this through sorcery. Sorcery of the things that they present to us um, through symbolism. They're pretty much out in the open about it, but few people have eyes to see what is before their eyes because we all exist in this dumbed down version of our reality, okay? So that is what is going on with our current reality. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into this. We only have a couple people watching at this moment, but it is kind of a odd time this morning for me to come on. And I should definitely be announcing these these things um, much further in advance. Um, okay, so first thing I want you guys to notice is that we have the 88th Oscars, the 88th, I'm sorry, Academy Awards coming up. This is going to take place on February 28th this year and this is the the image that is used for the Oscar it's all about gold um, we have Chris Rock who is be hosting this event let's take a look at what is going on with Chris Rock now from what they're saying here Chris Rock will host the show for the second time having previously hosted the 77th ceremony held in 2005 so he's hosting the 77th annual, and he will be hosting the 88th. Okay. Now, this 88th has significance, as we've talked about on this channel, for many, many reasons. Um, what I wanted to show you is, let's see if we can find that. We have some images of the actual Oscars and the types of imagery that they're using on these these Oscars it appears like a, a snake almost let's take a look at this here you see the serpent underneath the Oscar and you can see here's the head of this head of the serpent there and it twists around there and goes down okay this is at the base of the Oscar statue for the official uh, Oscars uh, logo here you kind of see some scaly looking uh, images around some of these points of the letters okay all of this is symbolic now we will be covering the 88th academy awards um as soon as those come out at the end of this month but i wanted to point out those striking synchronicities him hosting the 77th and now the 88th now we are in the Hebrew year 5777, or we will be next year. I'm sorry, I keep saying that, but next year we'll be in the Hebrew year 5777, which will be the last year of Obama's presidency. All right, so that's where we're at with that. Um, let's take a look here. So, hey guys, welcome. I'm glad you guys could come in this morning. We got Thor News in here. Hey Thor, how you been? Dagger Spells, Myra, Gleneth, John, Matthew. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. John Sear. Okay, so now we're at the 58th Annual Grammy Awards. Of course, 5 plus 8 is 13. What a lot of people don't realize is that the base of the new Freedom Tower is 158 or 85 feet tall. Let's take a look at the base of the tower base of one trade 
freedom. Why is the base important? Because it's the rock upon which they're building their church, okay? Um, which is just like the St. Peter's thing that we talked about. St. Peter's uh, church, and that being the, the rock, the rock of St. Peter, right? Let's look at let's look up what this base is. And this is all analogy, you guys. They destroyed the Twin Towers to build their new church, okay, on their rock. Okay, 8 plus 5 is 13. Let's take a look here. Let's find where that base is. All right. May have adjusted these numbers. Um, let's see. Let's cruise through here. Here it is. Um, the tower is built upon a 185-foot tall windowless concrete base. So 8 plus 5 is 13. This is done on purpose. This is the rock. See, it's concrete. It's windowless. This is the rock upon which they built their church. You see, they want their New World Order church. Uh to, to thrive in this world of economics and money, okay? So they took down the two towers and they built the one, the Freedom Tower. This is all New World Order stuff, you guys. Make no mistake. I'm trying to see if there's a picture of the base. You can kind of see it. It's before the prism goes up into the sky. Now the prism, of course, is showing two... Here's the base here. The prism is showing the as above, so below, the two prisms being squashed into one another from ab above and below okay which is what happens to the image when it comes into your eye it is flipped around right it comes in like this triangle and then the image is reversed that's why our eyes our eyes deceive us okay so this is the 100 this is the 58th annual grammy 5885 they use mirrors right and of course this took place on the last day of lupercalia now why is that important well, we did a bunch of videos exposing David Bowie in his music videos. There was a silver bullet. Everybody thought we were crazy. But the silver bullet represents the wolf. And then he howls to the moon, okay, in that music video. Okay, Lupercalia. This is what this is all about. And, of course, they immortalized him during these Grammy Awards. Right here, tribute to David Bowie, Lady Gaga, and Nile Rodgers. They did a whole series of of um, of tributes to David Bowie. Okay, let's see here, Space Odyssey, and of course, this all goes back to Lupercalia, which links back to Valentine's Day. And we've done a lot of work on that here, you guys. If you type in Lupercalia on this channel, you will find. All the information that we have that we have done on this and how it links back to human sacrifice in the World Trade Center make no mistake okay and I'll be back to the chat in a minute you guys I just want to get most of this out of the way the host L cool J even falls into um, what this is about okay the host being L cool J well how how does he fit in well he was born on January 14th 1968 and you're asking, so what? All right. Well, this is, oh, let's see. January 14th is the new year in the Julian calendar. Um, it says here, there are 350 days remaining to the end of the year. In the 20th and 21st centuries, the Julian calendar is 13 days behind the Gregorian calendar. Thus, January 14th is sometimes celebrated as New Year's Day by religious groups who use the Julian calendar. You guys have seen how I've overlaid the Julian with the Gregorian calendar as well as the Roman calendar to decode most of this stuff, okay? And it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Um, but this is the case, you guys. This is New Year's Day for them, okay? So the presenter at the Grammys um, basically... He was born on New Year's Day. All right. Let's close that up. What else do they have going on? Well, 
they had other presenters. The number one presenter was Taylor Swift, Out of the Woods. Let's take a look at that. This is the song by Taylor Swift, Out of the Woods. Okay, This is from her album called 1989, released on February 5th. We convert that from the Julian to the Gregorian. You get very close to Lupercalia once again. Okay, they're immortalizing the wolf. Okay, all of this fits in together. Remember, this is the last day of Lupercalia that this launched, that this that this was aired, and then we had Taylor Swift, and of course her album and this song, released on the fifth. Let's go ahead and convert that for you guys. Um, Morse calendar. This um, converter, uh, Julian. Now, when I'm doing a lot of this, you guys, in these live hangouts, I like to do these too to demonstrate to you the process by which I find this stuff. Okay, it's not some long, drawn out process where I'm trying to connect dots. Okay, it flows. It flows just like with the Holy Spirit. Okay. It just flows. It just just like how it's going right now. I have some tools that I use, and it just flows. Now, this February fifth date falls very close to Lupercalia. A couple days after, but very close. This whole February month has to do with the wolf, okay? Because Februa, Februa. Let's put, look that up on um, Google. Lupercalia. Gee. The whole month of February was named after Lupercalia. Here's Lupercalia. They used a thong. Okay, here's the days that it took place in ancient Romans. February 13th through the 15th. A thong, and this is all about the wolf. Luper means wolf. Okay, this is kind of a review for those of you that have been in this channel. Okay. Um, they wore a goat skin uh, called a thong. Okay. A flap of fur. This is where the whole looper, the uh, the whole furries sex cult came out of this. When people dress up in furries costumes, because they dressed up in goat fur. This is part of this sacrifice that they did. They sacrificed a goat and a dog, and then they dressed up in the fur of these animals. They wore shaggy thongs. Here's the thongs. Um, and they also had a fe februa. And it says that right. Let's find that. Februa. There it is. Skins of the animals were called Februa. Okay. They cut thongs. All right. So the whole month of February is based off of this cult of the wolf. Okay. So why we're seeing all this crazy stuff about wolves and vampires and all this lately in the last few years. All right. So we got that covered. What else we have here? I wanted to go over this Taylor Swift song. Okay. Let's blow this up. Looking at it now, it all seems so simple. This is called Out of the Woods. Now, for those of you that don't remember, let's pull up Ground Zero. See if they've got those trees in there yet. This computer moves really fast. I like this computer. I might not I might not use my new computer that I bought. I had to dig out the old one, did some work on it. And now we have a better computer. It's uh, flowing pretty good here. So you go down to Ground Zero. Whoops. World Trade Center. World Trade Center. If you look here, they planted a bunch of trees. Okay? These are the woods. The grove. Bohemian Grove. The woods. The trees. This is their thing. Look at all these trees. Okay? So these are out of the woods, right? Where are they going out of the woods to? The new Freedom Tower. It doesn't have any trees around it. Out of the woods, you see? Now watch this. Let's uh, minimize this. Go back in here. Uh, Google World Trade Center. Um, World Trade Center. Look at how many trees they plant. I think this had significance as well. These are the woods we're talking about now. World Trade Center. Uh, let's see. One World Trade Center. Oh, the memorial. Let's look at the memorial. Memorial. 
and memorial and museum. Oh, let's put trees in here. And this should help you guys too when you're doing your research on stuff. Using the general tools that I use to find these things. Here it is. Uh, survivor tree. Center sight. Let's look at this here. Field of trees. Field of trees is what it's called. So these these are the woods, out of the woods. Now we're going to get into the lyrics of that song. It's pretty cryptic, you guys. They reveal what they are up to. Forest of trees with two square pools in the center. Uh, let's see, how many trees were there? Field, field of trees. These are deciduous trees, swamp white oaks. Are arranged in rows and form informal clusters, clearings, and groves. And it says here in August, the workers began planting trees in the Memorial Plaza that live from 300 to 350 years. The autumn leaves are gold colored. The survivor tree is a calorie pear which survived the devastation and was kept for replanting. In September, this is the this is the fruit, okay? This is the fruit, the pear, this is the apple. This is the big apple, right? We shall survive, we shall come back stronger, we will remember the defiance of the garden, right? We will eat the apple. And they're going to and they embrace it, okay? This is why they perish because of lack of knowledge. Okay, then we got the two tridents of course. Let's see here. Somewhere it said, oh, here we go. By September, 2,243 trees were planted at the site. And eight more were planted in the days before the memorial opened. So here's the total number of trees planted. So that's, uh, all right. So let's go back here. So Taylor Swift talks about out of the woods, looking at it now. And it all seems to, so op so simple. We were lying on our couch. I remember you took a Polaroid of us. The camera was invented in 1888 by Kodak. Soon after that, the Polaroid came out. Okay, here's your 88s. Then discovered the rest of the world was black and white. Here's your black and white. These are the, 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 the Illuminati. This is the two um, prisms squashed together into the Freedom Tower, right? But we were in screaming color, and I remember thinking, are we out of the woods yet? In other words, it, has the New World Order happened yet? Have we brought about the new Freedom Tower? This is what she's singing about. Are we out of the woods, in the clear? Remember, the woods, these are the Twin Towers. Are they out of the clear? Are they in the Freedom Tower yet? Now watch this. This is crazy. Look at it now. Last December, we were built to fall apart, then fall back together. Fall apart, fall back together. You see? That is was 9-11. Your necklace hanging from my neck. Uh, the night we couldn't quite forget. When we decided to move the furniture so we could dance. You see how this is encrypted? Move the furniture. That's the Twin Towers. So we could dance, baby, like we stood a chance. Two paper airplanes flying, flying, flying. Two paper airplanes took down three buildings. There's flying, flying, flying. Those are the three buildings, right? Two planes hit the buildings. And I remember thinking, this is all about 9-11. Are we out of the woods yet? Remember when you hit the brakes too soon? This is when they tried to do it back in 2001. 20 stitches in the hospital room. What's the 20 stitches represent? Each of the Twin Towers is 110 stories tall. 110 plus 110 is 220. 220, there's your 20 stitches. The two towers that came down. When you started crying, baby, I did too. But when the sun came up, I was looking at you. Remember, we couldn't take the heat. That's the heat of the Twin Towers, the fires, okay? I walked out and said, I'm setting you free. The new Freedom Tower, free. Freedom Tower. But the monsters turned out to be just trees. And when the sun came up, you were looking at me. 
You were looking at me. You were looking at me. Oh, I remember. Now, do you guys see how this works? I'm just reading through. This is the my second time reading through this, and already things, other things popped out at me. Okay. This is what it's all about. Did she make these lyrics to this song? Is she that smart? I don't think so. I think these lyrics were given to her, but she's being used for sorcery. Okay. Let's close this up. I'm going to come back in the chat here and make sure you guys are good to go. Let's see. Where are you? Car 54, where are you? All right. We've got a pretty good crowd in here, you guys. Much love to you. Yeah, that's just blew, blows me away how they encode and encrypt this stuff. I see it like I see the back of my hand, you guys. All right. What else do we have in here? I'm just going to look in here. Welcome, you guys. Texas Death Corps, Mr. B007, Nicholas Clark, Unbent Reed. A positive, Josie Wales, Jed High. Good morning, guys. Melissa, good morning. All right. I watched X Files Babylon last night. Unbelievable. It opens with these underground sounds that sound like trumpets. And Mueller's talking about it with Scully. And I think uh, Logic Before Authority did a vid on this about how this could be the sounds from the drills from underground. And he has some actually live footage of these drills and what they sound like. And it sounds almost exactly like these trumpet sounds that we're hearing above ground. As we know, sound moves through soil, resonates. It would make sense that that's a possible explanation for that. Go check out Logic Before Authority. Check out his video on that. It's pretty, pretty compelling, pretty convincing, okay, that they're just underground building a bunch of tunnels. For what? That's what you have to ask yourself. They're building a whole infrastructure right beneath our feet. Okay. We talked about this year being maybe the year of alien disclosure. We talked about a lot of synchronicities about some of these films that have just resurfaced this year. Okay. That all had links back to Roswell, New Mexico, 69 years ago in 1947. They talked about Roswell in the Independence Day film. That was in the Hebrew year 5796 or uh, 69, 69 was it? Or no, it was in 1996. I'm sorry. And then we have another Independence Day sequel coming out this year, 69 years after Roswell. We have the X-Files, which is all about Roswell. That resurfaced again this year, 69 years after Roswell. Okay. Now, why people ask me, why do you talk about this stuff? You know, especially I get the religious types who are just mad at me because I'm talking about all this dark stuff. Well, guess what? This dark stuff is your reality. This is mainstream stuff that every one of you watches. So it's not dark to you. I'm pulling out the dark so you can see the dark. I'm taking the blanket off of the cockroaches. Okay, because God wants you to see this stuff. So that you stop wondering after the beast. So you stop, you know. Looking at this stuff as inert or just no big deal or just a coincidence. And you start seeing the sorcery that's going on with this stuff, you guys. That's why I talk about this as much as I do. So the 58th Grammy. See, we can derive a lot of stuff from what they do to look at who they are. Okay. Let's look at some of the other um, presenters and stuff. Now, many of you saw the tribute that... Um, Lady Gaga did with the lightning bolt on her eye to David Bowie. Okay. And that was all for a reason. Because he's like Mr. Lupercalia. The wolves are the ones that are set on a pedestal in their reality. All right. We also had what I noticed was a very um, uh, high emphasis on some of these black performers, okay? We had a tribute to Michael Jackson, okay? They also immortalized Michael Jackson at the Super Bowl, the 50th Super Bowl. Why? Because Michael Jackson died at 50 years old. And um, we had Beyonce doing her cross-chested uh, bullet uh, routine, which was copying Michael Jackson's, all right? We also had the monkey bubbles, but there was a an elephant named Bubbles that actually predicted the Super Bowl by eating a cake. Well, that was a reference to the monkey Bubbles. Okay? And that was that goes back to George Michael, who was born on the same day Michael Jackson died, on June 25th, 88 days after the 88th day of the year. 
Mike, George Michael was born on the same day that Michael Jackson died. They, they were separated by years apart, but it was the same calendar date, June 25th. And Michael Jackson had a monkey named Bubbles, and it was the monkey on his back. Just like George Michael sang about, why can't you set your monkey free? Why can't you do it? Why can't you set your monkey free? That was the lyrics to his song in 1988, the same year that Bubbles the Monkey was moved to Neverland Ranch. Okay, so now you know what Puppy Monkey Baby means, which is a Super Bowl commercial. That was Michael Jackson's Puppy Monkey Baby that he carried around all the time. Okay, they even show in the commercial the puppy. Let's pull it up here. I'd like to show you guys visuals. Puppy Monkey Baby. Nobody else knew what this commercial meant. Nobody. We got it. Because we have puppy monkey baby. Okay. Commercials. Let's put Super Bowl because it's just giving us this. Here's the puppy monkey baby. And just like Michael Jackson, it jumps on his lap and he's holding it like a little baby. It's the same thing, you guys. This is exactly what they were depicting here. Puppy monkey baby. Okay. Michael Jackson. Let's type in Michael Jackson bubbles. And you get the same thing. Okay, here's Michael Jackson's puppy monkey baby. Nobody else understood this. For some reason, this man was very high up there in the Illuminati. Okay, and I don't know if he changed his mind, but why are they still commemorating this man? Why are the most evil people like Beyonce commemorating this man still if he was supposedly good? Okay, there's his puppy monkey baby. All right. All right, let's go back to this. So they commemorated Michael Jackson. Who else did they commemorate quite a bit? This one threw me off at first. Lionel Richie. I'm like, what? Why Lionel Richie? Why did they do all these songs about, you know, for about that Lionel Richie me? Like, what's the big deal about Lionel Richie? So I looked up Lionel Richie. You can find everything in the numbers, you guys. He's 66 years old. Okay. Remember, everything is about 69 this year. He was born on 620. 620. Okay. What is 620? That's two sixes. Two sixes. 62 is two sixes. And he's 66 years old. So this man must be high up there too for them to be commemorating him the way they did. All right. 1949. So when he was born, a few years after 47. Okay. Let's see here. So we covered that, covered this. Um, now, what's this all about, you guys? This is for my pet goat. And I think I finally decoded what this split brain is. This is lightning falling from heaven, okay? Splitting our brains. This is your serpent side. This is the right side, the serpent side uh, of your brain. Or maybe it's your left when you reverse this. I don't know. But one side of our brain is serpent. This happened since Cain, okay? The blood of Christ is what corrects our blood. Because we're mixed with the serpent seed, except for the pure bloodline of Christ, which was the Israelites that came down through history so that Christ could be born a man pure in his blood and save all of us. That's why we have to believe in him to be saved. The reason why they don't tell you this is because if everybody knew that we were a part serpent, guess what? They would believe in Christ, right? It validates the story. So they can't let us know the whole story. So they give us a form of religion that pretty much leaves this part out of the story. It leaves out of the story that Cain was born through a process called super fecundation. Okay. We're going to look that up. It's kind of a montage of stuff. You guys fecundation. I'm going to show you today. Okay. This is it. This is twins born from different fathers. Believe it or not, this happens a lot more common than you would think fact unless they change this the last time i looked in here this happens in five percent oh here we go frequency um is 2.4 percent of the time from parents who have been involved in paternity suits so every time someone goes to a paternity suit and brings it before the court about two percent two to almost three percent of the time there are twins from different fathers which basically means the woman had has had intercourse within the same week and was impregnated with um, 
two different fathers. This happens is more commonly in cats and dogs. Stray dogs can produce litters in which every puppy has a different sire. Though rare in humans, cases have been documented. Okay. Now this makes sense. A stray dog is in heat. It's going around having sex with all these different dogs. And it's got all these different fathers. Super fecundation. Okay. People say, well, how could Satan have impregnated Eve? Very easily, just like the fallen angels impregnated the women. If you believe in the Nephilim story and the fallen angels, then how could you not believe in Satan impregnating Eve? Okay, the two match. The two are the same because they can both happen. It's possible for both to happen. And the Bible, people, they'll believe the Nephilim story, but they'll never, ever believe the story that Satan could have impregnated Eve. Okay. God then said to let's look this up. God talked to uh to Cain. Um, let's see Genesis. Um, Bible Hub. Let's go to Bible Hub. Okay, let's go in here and see where Cain. God said to Cain, "Let's go. Let's do this, so we can narrow this down. So we're not searching all over the place for it." I love this new computer thing is running lightning fast this is actually my daughter's old computer god spoke to cain genesis okay, so it's genesis 4 let's go in here genesis 4 oops genesis 4 people don't understand what this means explain it to you now, Cain, uh, Cain had not killed his brother yet, but God rejected his offering. Why would God reject Cain's offering? Well, religion tells you that God is a spoiled God, and he rejected Cain's offering because Cain's heart wasn't right or because, because of what Cain tried to give God. Or God has the right to reject our offering just because he can be like that. No, here's why God rejected Cain's offering. Because Cain had the tainted blood. So God, in the whole balance of physics, could not accept an offering from something that's part serpent. Okay? So therefore, he rejected Cain's offering. And then, he, but he talked to Cain. He reassured him. He said, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Why? Because Cain was part serpent. I can't take your offering. Sorry. But on Cain's offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very ag angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, even though you are part serpent, if you do what is right, will, not, will you not be accepted? You see how it all makes sense now. But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Now, why didn't God have this sin crouching at the door conversation with Abel? This is before Cain killed his brother. Cain hadn't done anything wrong. He was just angry. Why was he angry? Because he had the serpent inside of him. That's why he was able to carry out the first murder in the Bible. Okay? Okay. It desires to have you. Why does it desire to have you? Because it's inside of you. But you must rule over it. What is it? The serpent brain. This is the truth. Here it is. There's this serpent crouching at the door. Just like the Bible said it was. Then Cain killed his brother. Why did God have all these words to say to Cain just because Cain was angry? Because Cain was part serpent. Why do you think Jesus' blood has to correct us? They don't want you to know this because then you would know who the true God is. Enmity. Enmity. I'll put enmity between your seed, between your seed. Try that. I'm trying to find this area. I'll put enmity between you and the woman. Why? Because you and the woman is the serpent and the woman. Why would he have to put enmity between these seeds? Because 
Cain was born. The seas are going to battle, and that's exactly what happened all throughout history. Israelites versus the Canaanites. Uh, David versus the Philistines. And then the battles go on and on and on. All the ites mentioned in the Bible are all of the serpent seed. That's why God told them not to mix. That's why they were genocide. That's for the enmity between the seeds, you guys. Plain and simple. Uh, let's go back here. What else do we have here? So we covered out of the woods. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here worth looking at. Let's close this. And close this. Close all this stuff down, you guys. All right. Uh, I didn't look at any of these other acts. I just looked at the Taylor Swift because she was like, I guess she was the opening act, according to this playlist here. Carrie Underwood, Sam Hunt, The Weeknd, Ellie Goulding, Andre Day, John. L so this, these were all the acts. I looked at some of the big names. We covered Michael Jackson, David Bowie. Uh, let's see. Let's look at BB King. Let's look at this guy. Why would they drag him out of the recesses of uh, this? Okay, May 14th. He was killed on the Illuminati Day of Sacrifice. I'm going to show that to you. May 14th. Watch this. Um, convert calendar Morse. Convert calendar once you learn the keywords that can bring up different um, tools, that's how you navigate through this reality, you guys. This is how you find answers to stuff, okay? Now, May 1st, I covered this on a previous video too. Oops. May 14th is May 1st. So he was killed on the highest day of Illuminati sacrifice. I'm going to show that to you. Google Illuminati calendar Illuminati Oops, calendar sacrifice. Whoops. And here it is occult holidays and sabbats. And look here. May 1st is the highest day of Illuminati sacrifice. Um, let's see. Sacrifice is required. Uh, where is it? May. Here it is. Beltane Festival. Also called Walpurgis Night. This is the highest day of Druidic Witches calendar. May 1st is the Illuminati's second most sacred holiday. Human sacrifice is required. So he was killed on May 1st in the Julian calendar. BB is 2-2. Okay. This is 2015. And he, he lived to be 89 years old. Okay. Now a lot of these people have sold their soul to the devil. I'm not saying that B.B. King has. Once you accept the money, once you accept the fame, people are wandering after you, worshiping you. It's a quick way to lose your salvation because you're basically getting a reward here in this plane instead of moving on to the next plane. Now, I don't know this man, but I can tell you there's a glass ceiling through which all people of fame have to pass to sell their souls. They don't just let you be famous without getting something back from you, okay? He played the Lucille. That's like Lucifer. Gibson Lucille was his instrument. All right. BB 22. Which BB is 88 as well. For those of you that have eyes to see. And I think that pretty much covers most of the big acts, you guys, and the 58th Grammy Awards. Again, we'll be checking out the... Um, the Oscars that are coming up. Let's go back here in the chat, you guys. Been neglecting you guys. All right. Um, I'll answer some questions in here and see how you guys are doing. Yeah, Lucy, Lucy Ball, Lucille Ball is Lucifer. Okay. Um, watch. Uh, I love Lucy. Remember, remember what I told you about the hearts. Okay. Okay. This all goes back to Lupercalia. Here it is. Here's the opening of I Love Lucy. It's a big heart, right? This means something. It's not just a heart because it's love, right? Lucifer is the fake love. All right. Let's see here. Ah, prayer secret. Glad to be on here, you guys. 
Maybe it's usually Mother's Day, Luc <laughs> Lucifer, but exactly, Lucifer, Lucifer Ball, Bale. Exactly, Adam. Good catch. This is why I need you guys. You guys are the rest of the puzzle. Sometimes my brain operates like a computer and it can overheat at times. And I just, this is all I do, you guys, is see this stuff and show you guys. Um, looks like somebody's not feeling well, Tikur. Uh, blessings and healing for you and prayers. Uh, thriller. Yeah, Thriller was all about Lupercalia, you guys. Okay. Now they love to play both sides of the fence, the black and the white. So you have to be careful. Okay. There is really no light side in this reality. The only light side is Jesus Christ. Okay. And the fruitages of the Spirit from the Bible, long suffering, peace, joy. Um, those are that's the real light side. Okay. They're going to give you a false light side. Okay. They're going to present you with um, all these options to be good, but really you're not. Okay. Unless you're following Christ's example, that's the only way to do it. I spend every decision and choice I make during the day, and I'm not perfect, but every decision and choice I make, I try to think of what Jesus did in the Bible, in his life here, his short life on this earth. I try to be like him. I think, what would Jesus do? Okay. How did Jesus live? How did Jesus walk? How did Jesus talk? That is what I aspire to. And I know that I'm going to fall far short. But if you can keep your eyes focused on that instead of what this current reality offers us, you're pretty safe. You're gonna you're gonna nail it. May thirteenth. I don't know anything about May thirteenth. Um, thanks, a lunatic, Kim Swallow Smallwood. Amen. Um, but uh, five thirteen. What would that, what could that mean? Don't know. Yeah, all that's in, done in the dark will come to light. That's part of what we do here. That's what we do. We bring, we bring the light to the darkness. We expose everything so that people can wake up and stop being trapped in the prison. Okay. Trapped in the prison. Now I was reading some stuff about this bee. Okay. The bees. Let's talk about that for a minute. And, um, okay. This, okay. Many of you saw the movie, the matrix, but what you didn't know is that there was a scene and there were the Merovingian comes out and they talk about um, Persephone and there's like some B references. And then I looked and I found out, I read in this blog, it says the Merovingian Kings were noted sorcerers in the matter of the Samaritan Magi. And they firmly believe in the hidden powers of the honeycomb because a honeycomb is naturally made up of hexagonal prisms. It is considered by philosophers to be the manifestation of divine harmony in nature. You guys, we just discovered this over the past year. This is what all of our work has been about. Remember I was telling you how Saturn's North Pole is shaped like a hexagonal cube? It's the it's the basically the big bad daddy mama honeycomb cell is what it is. And it manifests this entire reality, okay? Down to the snowflakes that are shaped like hexagons, honeycombs. Everything is manifesting into this honeycomb nature. The scales on a snake are shaped like a honeycomb. Okay, all of that happens by design. The where they get it wrong here, <clears throat> excuse me, is that they're saying it is divine. It is the divine harmony in nature. They're making it sound like a good thing. It's actually a prison. Okay, we're not living to our full. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Our full potential in this reality. We're in a state of sin. Okay, so we shouldn't think this is great. Okay. Um, but then what I notice here it says in Proverbs 24, 13 through 14, my son, eat thou honey, because it is good, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. Okay. That's pretty amazing. Is there some secret ingredient in honey that's supposed to help us? I stop using sugar. I just eat honey. I've got some also some um ordered on this website I go to, some honey royal jelly. It's basically the, the honey that surrounds the queen and develops her into a queen, okay? And what it is is it's actually uh, the same stuff that all the other bees get, but the difference is, is they immerse the queen in it, 
to much higher concentrations and they encase her in this like this surroundings okay and what happens is um, she then develops she starts out as a normal drone but then she develops into a queen and this is one of the only examples in nature where genetics are affected by outside uh, sources okay which is in this case it's the royal jelly and I thought that was interesting so I ordered some royal jelly it's not very expensive I ordered some and I ate it now you got to be careful with this stuff because the ancient Egyptians worship the bees we talked about how the ancient Egyptians are like uh, the Nephilim but here's where I think is going on I think a lot of this knowledge was known by like the ancient Israelites okay like like this the Proverbs verse that I just read to you God tells us how to live He's telling us to eat honey, that it's going to help us be wise and knowledgeable. But what the, the people, the rulers of this world have done, they knew the knowledge too, and they're hiding it from us. That's why they knock on Gnostics. That's why they hate Gnostics, and they made it a bad word in the, in the religious circles because they don't want you to search for knowledge, okay? So they made it a bad thing. They want to have use the knowledge to control all of us. That's what they want, okay? That's what they want. And so, um, yeah, I'm trying that out. You know, um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, when I was younger, my mom gave me cod liver oil and a tablespoon of honey. And I think she put lemon on it in a giant spoon. And I remember eating that. And uh, all, you know, the first years I was growing up. Uh, I don't really ever remember being sick as a child. Never had asthma or anything like that. I don't know. Who knows? Codler oil, honey, lemon. <laughs> anyway, okay, what else we have here? Uh, I'm looking through here. See in, in the... Uh, raises sugar very fast. Oh, I wonder... Yeah, I wonder... Hmm. I wonder if there's a way around that, Kim. Hmm. Thanks for sharing that. So if you're, you know, if you have any type of sugar issues, you might want to uh, rethink the honey thing. Okay. Now here is Napoleon the third. And this was, they actually embedded these bees onto, um, you know, the, their robes and stuff. It says right here, honey bees signifying immortality and resurrection were royal emblems of the Merovingians revived by Napoleon when his nephew, Louis, the, Napoleon Bonaparte later became emperor of the head of the second French empire. He too adopted the bee as part of the design of his imperial standard. It's the, it's the, an emblem. And um, so this is what the bees represent. It was on the flag. Talks about it in ancient Egypt. Okay. Pre-dynastic times. So they, you know, God knows how we're supposed to live in order to, um, uh, be healthy and strong and happy okay and so what happens is we can run into a situation because all this knowledge is taken away and they're trying to get us in all these gmo foods and stuff that we can become sick because we don't have the knowledge we're perishing because of lack of knowledge okay this is all biblical so those who are in control seek to hide this knowledge from us so that we don't have the knowledge and then we die and we get sick Okay, so that's the problem with this. And so it's okay to search out the Bible and, and course through it and try to find, you know, answers to why, why we are getting so sick. All right. It's okay to do that. All right. What else do we have here? Um, my mother gave me <laughs> lots of owls lately. Yes, owls everywhere. I did a video inside a church and showed a honeybee hive. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay. I think it's probably about time to get off here. I'm just going to stick in the chat for a little bit. You guys are going to go ahead and get this published up. Um, you never know, Kim. Also, maybe the honey, even though it raises your sugar, um, uh, maybe it, maybe it does something different. Like maybe eventually we'll balance it out. Give it a shot. Take a little bit at a time. See what happens. You know, monitor yourself and maybe we'll, turn out different you never know you know sometimes we go on faith you know yeah so you guys you guys know what the owls mean right okay so here it is 
I'm going to explain it to you. Uh, though, walk through valley. Okay. Everybody knows this scripture. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. Let's do this. This is going to blow you away. Then we're going to off here. My shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, when I read this, it makes me want to cry sometimes because King David just laid it all out right here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Okay. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever what is king david talking about well i believe the holy spirit has revealed to us what he's talking about this is the night sky at the equator stars time lapse and this just blew me away let's look at this this is the valley of the shadow of death this is it Okay. This is the North Pole. This is the South Pole. This is going, this is a panoramic. It's going across. Let's blow this up. And this is some stuff that we covered on this channel last year, but it's important to bring this back up again. Okay. What you're looking at is time lapse photography and panoramic together. So, in other words, this is what you would see in the night sky at the equator. Right at the equator, the stars go up and down. They spin clockwise as you look south. They spin counterclockwise as you look north. This is the valley of the shadow of death. This is the prison we're locked in. These are also the owl eyes in the night sky. This is what they worship because they worship the prison. Behind this is heaven. This is the rod and this is the staff. Rod is, goes up and down and the staff has a curve to it. We lay down in still pastures and still waters upon the table. Upon the table that he has prepared for us. This is just unbelievable. What else does Psalms 23 say? This is hiding in plain sight. Green pastures, still waters. All of that would be down here. Prepare a table for, for me. Rod and the staff. This is the valley of the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death. That's darkness behind this. this is the night sky. The valley of the shadow. There's the valley of death. We're all born into sin and death. See how it all lines up. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Our enemies are all here. That is what we're dealing with here. And when I made this discovery, I was choked up because this is amazing. No one else has found this. Why did the Holy Spirit pick me? Because I love him and he knows that I will sing his truth from the rooftops to everyone that will listen, which is the promise that I made him. And this won't be the last discovery, you guys. This won't be the last discovery. Okay. All right. What else do we have here? Whew, man, a little choked up here. This hole they got uh, got us in is deep, y'all. We need to keep awake as many of as possible. Yes, we're in a hole, but David gives us he gives us hope, right? He gives us hope. God always has everything figured out. And if you lose your life here, you have everlasting life. Have faith in that, you guys. If you're sick here, you can have 
unbounding energy and joy on the other side. Perfect bodies, perfect stamina. You won't be hungry. You won't be, there will be no more tears, nothing. It even says that the cobra will lie down with the something or the lion will lie down with the lamb and all that, you guys. And that's what we have to look forward to, okay? Keep our eyes fixed on heaven, not this earthly realm. We live this life as kind of a proving grounds. We got to get through it, make right choices, keeping your eyes fixed on heaven, making heavenly decisions about your spirit rather than earthly decisions about what am I going to eat today? What am I going to, how am I going to provide for my family? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Yes, those things are important, but you do the best you can, you guys. Um, the meat company I order from is called Grassland, wait, Grassland beef.com i think um the meat's different okay i'm not going to tell you it's going to taste like the meat you buy in the store but it's you can know it's hormone free um antibiotic free and grass-fed it's all grass-fed no corn which is more natural for the beef they have beef chicken they have everything on there you guys grassland beef or something u.s wellness meats that's what it's called u.s wellness meats.com um, um, much love to you, Silent Night. I'm glad that all of you are here and that I found all of you. You know, this is a two-way street. I wouldn't be on here if nobody was listening, right? So um, we work together. You guys encourage me. I encourage you. And that's how we do this, you guys. That's how we do this. And it's all based on love. All right. Kim sent me some deer hamburger. I got to try that. Maybe I'll cook it up and do a video of me taking a first bite. I don't know. So um, you guys notice this too. Um, Psalm, the reason why Psalm 23 is close to my heart is because um, this is six, six verses long. It's a 23rd chapter. Remember, six is always nine. So this is 923 or, or 329. My birthday is 329. So this, this verse in this chapter has a lot of significance to me, uh, being born on the 80th day of the year. So let's see what else you have here. I think we covered just about everything. I was looking into Warden. You guys are probably wondering why I had this pulled up. Wardensburg syndrome, okay, rare genetic disorder characterized by varying degrees of deafness, minor defects in structures arising from neural crust and pigmentation anomalies. I was looking into why I have polychromia in my eyes, okay? So I'm looking at this, and um, it says here, here are some of the signs and symptoms. Widened eyes, eyes with two different colors, or eyes with one iris having two different colors. That's me. Sectoral heterochromia or uh, polychromia. Forelock of white hair. When I was younger, when I was a child, there's pictures of me, and I've got white hair, like blonde hair on my temples, Okay. Um, what else is in here? Hearing loss, low hairline. I kind of, well, actually I don't have a low hairline. I don't have a unibrow either. That's one of these other things. White pigmentation on the skin. I did have this, my lower back, uh, look like Bambi has spots on my lower back. So I'm kind of dark complected. So the spots kind of showed up. Um, so I was like, you know, I was curious, you know, you can go and get testing for all this stuff. But part of this is, um, what do you call it? They, there's something going on with the brain, okay, where your brain is like increased. Now, this also occurs in animals. It says here that they're, they're like ferrets, that 75% of U.S. ferrets that have a blaze or a white head sold from the pet store are deaf. And many of them have this syndrome, probably from interbreeding or something like that. Pretty interesting stuff. So the blaze, when you get a blaze, they call it, maybe in horses too, the blaze has something to do with that. Domesticated cats with one blue, with blue eyes and white coats are often completely deaf. That's interesting. Blue eyes and white coats. Hmm. Whether or not this is a result of Wardenburg syndrome remains unclear. Deafness in, is far more common in white cats than in those with other coat colors. So if you have a white cat, do a little test, see if it's deaf, you know. Interesting. 
this is the kind of stuff I just love, you guys. I just love looking at this stuff because it's, you know, we're learning stuff. And we find answers. Answers we're not getting in the mainstream, you guys. Josie has white spots on his skin. All right, man, we must be in the same, what do they call a bunch of deer together? We're in the same herd of deer or something. I don't know. <laughs> I love Bambi. All right. Go back in here. Okay, you guys, I think we're probably going to get off of here unless you guys have some final questions. I don't want to keep you on here all day, but if you have to work and stuff like that. Blessings and prayers to you, T. Kerr. You know, I get a lot of people that come to the channel and offer information. I can't get through all of it. Um, I try. Some of you have consistently provided information that I use. T. Kerr actually provided us the, um, was it this? No, not that. Provided us the uh, the thing that shows the hexagons turning into the Star of David when it rotates. She provided that. I thought that was really interesting, so I used that in a couple of my videos. And so, um, so that's what's going on with that, you guys. Oh, look, uh, Josh had a white cow, blue eyes, completely deaf. There you go. Now we learned something. It's pretty interesting. Um, bless, bless you guys. I love you guys. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pop off of here. Take care and be safe, you guys.